Well, like I said, I have no idea why you can't just say to these prosecutors and why you can't say to these judges, are you acting like a judge? Are you acting like a prosecutor? How many years of acting have you have under your belt? How many years have you been acting as a judge? Uh, I've been acting as a judge for 17 years. How many years have you been acting as a uh, prosecutor? Uh, 12 years. How long have I been acting as a defendant? What? For about three seconds, right? I've been, I've been acting as a defendant for three seconds, and you people are going to try to speak legalese to me? Your language? How long have I spoke legalese? Uh, three minutes. So I've been speaking legalese for three minutes, and you want me to contract with you? You want me to give you a competent answer in legalese? You want me to tell you whether I'm guilty or not guilty or no contest? And that's a legal question, right? How many years have I gone to school to learn legalese? You think I'm a legalese practitioner? You think I speak in legalese? You think I'm, I'm, I'm a legal person? No, I, I, when you're looking at me, you're looking at man. When you look at me, you can say you, you're, looking at a, you're looking at woman. This is woman before you, not a legal person, not a legal lawyer, not a legal defendant. I'm, you're looking at a woman. You're looking at man. So if you're trying to convince me to speak in some foreign tongue, Japanese, Chinese, legalese, you're trying to get me to speak in some sort of crazy foreign language that I have no competency in, and you know it. And you know I am not, I'm not have any competency in legalese. And you know legalese. You, li you live legalese. This is all you do for a living is speak legalese, Japanese, Chinese. And you're trying, to, you're trying to get me to act in your court as a legal person or and speak legalese when you know I have no training? Why don't we make this a fair fight? Why don't you let me go to law school and learn the legal language for four years and then call me? How about you do that? How about you give me full training? How about I come here after four years of training? How many years of training did you have before you became an attorney, before you became a judge? How many years of training? Did you have? How many years of training are you giving me? Three minutes? And then you're going to run over me like a freight train? Because you think it's funny? You think it's cute? You're getting me in a boxing ring and you, and you, you have years of experience on beating people up? And you're going to put gloves on me and say, now defend yourself? You're going to beat me up in, in 10 seconds. What the hell's wrong with you, sadistic people? What the hell's wrong with you? Do you not know that these people can't defend themselves? Yeah, well, we know they can't defend themselves. So then why are you fighting with them? Well, you know, it's easy. It's easy to take everything away from you because we ask them a question, are you guilty, not guilty, no contest, and they don't say, hey, is this a legal proceeding? Is this a fight? Am I a fight? Am I a fight? Am I a defendant? Are you trying to take something from me? Are you trying to say I owe you something? Are you trying to make me give something to you if I lose? Well, yeah. And you think that's fair. With no training, no skills, no practice, you're just going to run me over. You just think it's funny. They laugh at people in court. Of course. Unless you say to them, hey, you know what? You want to do this man-to-man, -man, that's fine. Let's do this man-to-man. -man. Are you claiming I've done something wrong? Have I done something wrong to you, ma'am? Well, you could ask me as a, a judge. Okay, judge, is that your first name, last name, your name is judge? Okay, judge, have I done something wrong to you? No. Have I done something wrong to the guy over there? Is there anybody in this court saying I've done anything wrong to them? No. So I haven't done anything wrong, yet I'm standing here today. Have I done anything wrong? No, then why am I here today? Well, what I did was illegal. Okay, I don't speak legalese. I don't, I don't know if I did something un-Japanese, un-Chinese, unlegal. I don't know, and I don't effing care. All I want to know is that I do something wrong. Well, nobody's saying you did anything wrong. So I, I didn't do anything wrong, so I guess everything I did was correct. Well, nobody's saying you did it correct. Okay, well, I did I do it wrong. No, I didn't do it wrong. Okay, well, then did I do it? Uh, I did it incorrect. What did I do incorrect? Well, you went through the light. Well, is going through the light legal, or is that wrong? Did, did somebody get harmed? Did anybody get injured? Any man here got a claim that I've done something wrong? Was there a, actual damage to their property? No. Then what did I do again? Oh, I, so what I did was illegal. Okay, I don't speak legalese. I have no interpretation of your legal codes. I don't speak legalese. I don't read legal documents. Well, you got a legal document there saying I did something you know, illegal? Where does it say that? Here, right here, the legal code. Oh, the legal code. Isn't that special? I don't speak legalese. So what do, we, what, what do we keep talking about, this legal language? Just talk to me man to man. What did I do? Bottom line, what did I do? Well, you went through a stop sign. Okay, was there any damage? Well, no. So, so then why are we here? I thought damage, I thought guilt and debt was the same word. So if there's no damage, there's no debt. Every case needs to have a damage. Without damage, there is no case. So where's the damages? There is no damages. So what's the case that's before this court? Well, that's the case. Well, that case is to be discharged because there's no damages. It's missing. It's like it needs three legs on a table. It's missing a leg. It ain't going to stand. You, you have no case, ma'am. You have no 
damages, you, you can't move a case against me in court. You can't move a case against a man or woman in court without damages. I'm not a legal person. Yes, you can move a case against a legal person without damages. You can't move a case against man or woman without damages. There's okay, no way sir. I could satisfy the debt. There's no way I could be not guilty. There's no way I could pay off the debt without damages. Without damages, there's no bill. Without the bill, there's no, de- there's, no, uh, there's no way I could compensate. They try because they said that I beat up the cop. If you beat up the cop, why do you pay for the damages? Because I didn't even hit him. He said I hit him. So why don't you ask him to hand you the bill? Because there must be damages. If to hit somebody, oh. there must have been damages. So where's the damn damages? Okay. Did you ask him for the bill for the damages? No. If he hit your car, and he hit your car, and, and, and there was no damages because he just hit it at one mile an hour, and he hit the back bumper, and it didn't even put a scratch on it. He hit your car. Yeah, whoopie do. What's the damages? Okay, what's the damages? All right. They just hit a damn bill. Like, oh, you hit my car, you hit my car. Look, dude, it sounds like you're saying I hit your car at 100 miles an hour. Dude, I hit your car barely rolling one mile an hour. There's not even a dent on your bumper. What the hell are you squealing like a little punt, little little woman for? What are you doing? What's the hell wrong with you? Well, where's the damage? Well, you hit my car, you hit my car. I'm a policeman, you hit my car. Dude, I don't care if you're the freaking Pope. I hit your car. Yeah, is there a dent? No, then quit squealing. What are you jibber-jamming about? So, oh, you hit a cop. Okay, great. Where's the damages? Oh, there is none. Then what the hell are you squealing about? So give me the bill for the damn damages and I'll pay for it. No damages? You got no case. You hit a cop. What, I hit you I hit you with a feather? I hit you with a piece of dust? What did I hit you with? Where's the damages? Any damages? No, then what the hell are you squealing about? You sound like a little girl. <laughs> oh, I'd love to say that. Yeah, then just say it. Okay, I'm going to... Yeah. Because he is a little girl. Yeah. She wasn't I mean, damaged, he, buddy. He freaking tased me. Yeah. And, and then he said, well, I hit him. That's why he tased me. Um, and he said I hit him 15 times in the face. Oh, my God, I'm only 5'1". Good. Has he got a third-party impartial witness? Does he have a video of it? Uh, he's got all the... Co- no video. Well, there you go. Say so that's your word against my word, Mr. Rock, please, man. Right. Yeah. So your word is as good as mine. But if you got pictures of the way he tased you, like if you got burn marks or I something, like I said, hey, buddy, I got burn marks. You don't. Yep, I do. Well, there you go. And that's why you show the judge. And that's why you make a claim against him for a trespass, that he, that he attacked you. He did. Okay. Yeah, well, then why did you have a suit against him? Because um, I'm an idiot. I'm not legalese. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I thought you said that he attacked you with a taser. He did. So then why didn't you sue him? Well, I'm going to now. Oh, you're going to now. Why, why didn't you sue him before? Because uh, my head was wrapped up on all this junk. Well, the, the odds of you being successful at, at suing this guy is like zero and none. Mm-hmm. But just the way you're talking. Well. If you didn't even think about suing the guy for attacking you, what's the point of doing it now? You 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 didn't think that you thought it was you didn't think that was wrong for him to attack you? Yeah, I thought it was very wrong. So then why didn't you sue him then? Why didn't you why didn't you file a lawsuit or file a complaint or a claim then? Did you file a complaint or a claim that he, he attacked you? Yeah, I tried to, the sheriff wouldn't let me. Oh, the sheriff wouldn't let you. The sheriff would let you do what? File a claim? Yes. File a complaint? Oh what did he do? He complaint. pointed a gun at you? No. He he filed I I asked him for the complaint to you know, fill out and do that, and then I told him I wanted him arrested, and he said he couldn't do it, because from what I've learned, that oh, the sheriff... Is- oh, so you, so, so you talk to the sheriff with your mouth? Yes. Oh, so you're so smart that you talk to him. Is there some reason why you didn't write him a letter and have it served upon him? Is there some reason why you didn't write a letter to the sheriff and say, hey, I require you to do your job. Take a police report now. Yeah, well, why don't you just find a police report? Why don't you find a, a copy of a police report somewhere and say, oh, okay, that's their forms that they use? Okay, and then you fill out the damn thing. Make it look just like theirs and say, there you go. I filled out the report for you. Now send it over to the prosecutor's office. Oh, you won't do it? I'll do it myself. So the sheriff won't do it. Just say, hey, you know, tell him he's got to do his job. Say, oh, write, it, write him a letter. Say, is there some reason why you want to be derelict in your duty? Is there some reason why you don't want to take a report? Is there some reason why you don't want to report this? And serve him. Then when he doesn't want to do it, then what do you do? Then you make a claim of, against him for being derelict in his duty, that he has a duty to serve and protect his fellow man. 
and he's derelict in his duty. You say since you won't, you know, since you're derelict in your duty, I'm accruing a loss. So make a claim against him. Take it to the court. Say, hey, you know, Bob is acting as a sheriff. Refuses to do his job, and because he refused to do his job, I wasn't able to pay my hospital bills. Because why should I have to pay for my damages? Why should I have to pay for it when this when this man assaulted me? You're making it much clearer for me. Huh? But you're making it clearer for me now. I guess it just yeah, didn't... that's what I'm saying. If the sheriff if the sheriff won't do his job, you, you write you, you serve him a letter upon him. But like I said too, it's what happened in uh, what happened in Ohio, what happened in North Carolina. And the sheriffs in these towns don't want to do their job as sheriffs in the county. The people go to the state police. They say to the state police, I'm going to need you to take... So the state police will do it. If the sheriff won't do it, the state police will take it. So I'm having a problem over here in this county. And this deputy took me a taser to me and he, and he lit me up. And I want you to people to find out why he thought he had the right to, to light me up like that. I, I believe he, he committed a battery on me. Yeah, let the state police determine whether or not you know, just because you say, oh, this, you, know, you go to a little, little mom and pop police department and say, hey, man, they, uh, the, the police and the police, you, 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 de- you know, Sheriff Andy Griffith, you know, Bonnie Fife just lit me up. And he's like, look, Bonnie's my friend. I knew him for 30 years, man. I'm not going to charge him with a crime. I was like, okay, then I'll go to the state police. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, just imagine it's Andy Griffith and this is Mayberry. And it's, it's him and his buddy. It's like, look, I grew up with the guy. I'm not going to press charges on him. I'm not going to put him in jail. He's my friend. You're just some crazy drunk lady. I don't give a damn. They say, oh, so I'm some crazy drunk lady. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm going to go to the state and the police, and I'm going to have them investigate what's going on down here in Mayberry. And maybe they'll get to the bottom of it. Maybe they'll say I am freaking crazy. Yeah, and of course, I'm sure that when, when you ask the sheriff to uh, uh, charge this guy with a crime, it's probably two minutes after you got arrested. It probably wasn't two weeks or two months after it happened. No, it was probably about a week because I was in jail and then I got out. Yeah, when hmm. you got okay, when you got out, what did you do? Well, you, 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 other, other, other than going to your local bar and just slamming back a few tall ones, what what did you do? <laughs> I didn't do that. I just came home and trying to reflect everything, write everything down that happened. Well, and, what was you arrested for? Uh, well, he pulled me over. He said I was um, uh, crossed over the yellow line, and I didn't have my tags on my car, so I thought, well, I thought he was coming for me for that, but he didn't. But he was, he's a cop I know. Uh, we've had issues when he's off duty. He's been very rude to me. He planned this whole thing, and that's basically what happened. So, oh, so you went to jail for, for a week for going over the mm-hmm. yellow line. So that's that's special. Well, no, that's what he claimed at first. Because like, I asked him, I said, well, what are you pulling me over for? So what time yeah. do you live in so I don't go there and cross the double yellow line and spend a week in jail? <laughs> Kansas, Lynn County. No, oh, so that, that's why you uh, went to jail for a week? That's the official police report? You went to jail for a week because you crossed the double yellow line? No, 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 no. When he asked me to um, get out of my vehicle, I told him, no, I'm not getting out of my vehicle until the sheriff gets here. I said, oh. I do not trust you. Oh, so so <laughs> he said, oh, that's cool. So that way you could just turn your keys and drive, put it in drive and just drive down the road at 500 miles an hour, right? No, I gave him my keys. I told him, I'm not going nowhere. Here's my keys. I handed it to him. And Good. Is that what he did? And that's when he y- yanked on my arm and tried to How pull me out of the I'm sorry? You had the window down? No, they pulled my door open. Okay, so you didn't lock your door. Okay, so they pulled right. the door open. Right. And then I tried to pull my door back shut, and they pulled it open again. And then that's when he started pulling up, well, asked me to get out of the vehicle. And I told him, no, I'm not going to get out of the vehicle until the sheriff comes here. Because I mm-hmm. did not trust him because I already had problems with him. I know how he is. It's my way or no way. And okay. so he pulled on my arm, and he couldn't get me out of the vehicle that way. So then that's when he decided to show me the taser. And then he tased me three times, and I would still not do nothing. And he acted like I hit him because... I pushed that taser away from my leg real gently, slowly, to have him stop tasing me. And then he whipped my arm up in the air and went, ugh. So that's why I thought there was video. 
Yeah, so what did he do in the past that was so horrible that you couldn't just comply? I just wouldn't I comply. Wouldn't... Huh? I, I was not going to comply to him. Yeah, why? What did, what did he do to you in the past? I yelled and screaming and threatened, basically. So what did he do to you in the past? Uh, we live in a gated community, and we go to work at the same time every morning and come back home every day. And he acted like I did not live there. He was trying to keep me out of the gate, blocking it. So I pulled up next to him and rolled down my window and asked him, why are you blocking me out? And all he did is screaming at me that I um trespassing. Oh, he says, do you know what you're doing? You're trespassing. I says, no, I'm not. I live here. And then he says, do you know who I am? I'm Tate West, the chief of police of Lay Seed. And I said, yes, Tate, I know who you are. And then he says, did you know you just about hit my car? And I said, well, I didn't hit your car. And he was just screaming at me. I couldn't even really talk to the man. I mean, he was just, like, psychotic. Okay, great. So so you guys got into a yelling match at one time. Then he pulls you over the side of the road, throws him out of the yellow line. And what did he actually charge you with for a week? He charged me. Uh, well, it wasn't a week. It was, um, I, I bailed out. Okay, it was it was 20 minutes. Okay, regardless, it was 20 minutes, lady. You, you got a jail. Then what happened? No, before, what I'm saying, what did he actually charge you with? He, he's got me with um, battery, assault, and then interfering with his duty, and then a DUI, and then oh. uh, not not taking any of the sobriety tests, because I wouldn't consent yeah, to nothing, because I thought the free man, you know, the thing is, don't consent to anything. If you consent, uh-huh. then, yeah. then you're in their jurisdiction. That's right. Everybody, everybody bellies up to the ball and gets a free round. That's right. It's a free man thing. We all get yeah. drunk and we'll go home driving. Yeah, I know. That's the free man thing. Well, we I don't know about, about that, but... They tell the cops to go fuck themselves. And I wasn't drunk. Anyhow, me and my husband were just coming home from work, and that's what he put up. Uh, yeah. And uh, so. too bad. Uh, yeah, and what, what's with the DUI? Yeah, how are you going to fight that? Well, I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, so what is it, how are you gonna how are you gonna fight the DUI? How are you gonna defend yourself for the DUI charges? He didn't take a blood sample. No. He didn't take a breathalyzer. No. So how did how did he know you were drunk? He what does the police report say? Like? He just uh, he said he smelled alcohol. That's all. There you go. So he smelled alcohol. Great. Yeah. Okay. So he smelled alcohol. So when he said that he smelled alcohol, how? He has no video of the encounter at all? No, that's what I don't get. Okay, so he said that you were drinking and driving. Yeah. And smelled alcohol. Yep. And he, did, and he didn't do a blood test and he didn't do a breathalyzer. No. And he and they, and they arrested you for DUI? Yeah. So what did your attorney say about the DUI? How is he going to get you off of that? I don't have an attorney. Okay, what okay, so you don't have an attorney. So when did this happen? Um, July twenty ninth. Oh, so it happened like six months ago. Yeah. Okay, and what did what did the prosecutor say to you about the DUI? Anything? I don't know. He brought up a whole bunch of stuff from my past. Okay. All I want to know is this DUI. What you, what what is what do you okay, you were charged with DUI. What did the judge say? You're gonna to go to jail for six months of DUI, what did he say? Oh, yeah, they gave me, um, come on, they got me on charges like $10,000 in five years worth of jail time. They got me on a DUI, interference with the LEO, a PBT refusal, and battery on the LEO, and a DUI test refusal. Okay, so... So when they lock you up, they didn't take they didn't take a blood sample. They didn't take a they didn't take a breathalyzer. They didn't do anything. When you went to jail, they said, "Don't worry about it. We're not going to take a blood test. Don't worry about it. We're not going to take a breathalyzer." They didn't do nothing to me in there. They didn't even swab my mouth. Because I talked to the sheriff and he asked me if he did that, and I said no, he did not. Yeah, you haven't been to trial since July. Um, I've been in and out. Um, I went to. First, they had a bond hearing, and then they had arraignment, and 
Then and the now, judge didn't appoint you an attorney? They wanted to, but I refused because I thought if I got an attorney, it would bring me into their jurisdiction. Okay, so like I said, breaching a peace, it doesn't matter whether it's in your jurisdiction or not. If you hit a cop, if you hit another man, if you hit anybody, you're drinking and driving, they're in their jurisdiction whether you want it or not. You breached a peace. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, you could say, well, I'm not in your jurisdiction. Yeah, you are. You hit somebody. You hit a man. Or you hit their car. Like, well, I don't have to answer that. What do you mean? Did you hit the guy's car? Didn't you hit the guy's car? Well, it's a big old tent on the side of the car. Yeah, well, you hit him. And it's the same thing with breach of the peace. If you're out there causing a public disturbance and you're drunk, you're going to jail for breaching the peace. So right. like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure but out what the world you're charged with. But I didn't even breach the peace. Okay, it's just, okay, so the policeman, you, you're in the public. You're dropping your car down a public road. The policeman stops your car. He says, get out of your car. You say, fuck you, and die again now. That's not breaching the peace? Okay. Of course it is. All right. Right, everybody knows when a cop says to, you know, do something, you're supposed to do it. So you put up a hell of a fight, and you weren't going to get out. Did he kill you? Did he shoot you? No, he just tased me. Yeah, well, why do you take it? Well, if you got out of the car, do you think if you just got out of the car nice and cooperatively, he would have tasted you? I don't know, really. You think he had nothing better to do? He's like, oh, man, if she's nice and sweet and she's polite to me and she steps out of the car and she acts like a lady, that, you know what, I just can't wait to light her up. Well, I'm telling you, he set me up. That's what he did. He did this for on profit. For what? For crossing a double yellow line? So you cross a double yellow line. You pay a $5 fine, you go on with your day. Set you up for okay. what? Okay, Carl, this is what happened. I was coming home from work. I was at the stop sign. He was coming from the highway from the uh, east side and going west, and I came behind him, and my husband was behind me, and we went into town. Once we got into his jurisdiction, he cut down one, down a road, and down another, and down another, and came behind me. Okay. And in the police report, he's telling them that he was behind me the whole time. I, okay. That's where I asked for the video because he's well, lying. He was, he, was, he was behind you the whole time while he was in his jurisdiction. Yeah, he got behind me because he knows me. Mm-hmm. He right, in his jurisdiction. In his city, he was behind you the whole time. Outside yeah. of his jurisdiction, he wasn't. Okay, but so he, 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 he's, he's driving up behind, he's driving behind you. What do we do? So he's driving behind you. Then what happens? Well, then the next thing I know, lights are coming on. Okay, and then what are you supposed to do when the lights come on? Pull over. Yeah, I have a I have a fiesta and everybody starts dancing in the street. Yeah, I know, one or the other. Okay, so you pulled over. Right. Okay, so you pulled over. Then 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 what happened? Then what are you supposed to do? Get, I guess give my driver's license and whatever he wants. Yeah, just put your driver's license on the roof of the car, stick your hands out the window so he doesn't feel like you're reaching for a gun. Right. You put both your hands out the window and say, here you go, sir. No, I'm, I'm showing you I don't have a, a gun in my hand. I'm a gun in my car, gun in my possession. Yeah, my hands are out the window, sir. I'm, I don't wish for you to be harmed. I don't wish you for you to be afraid. I wish you to go home to see your wife and kids, and I hope I get to go home and see my wife and kids. But here's my hand, sir. They're empty, sir. My wallet and my driver's license is on the roof. Is there anything else I can help you with, sir? No, you decided not to do that. You decided to do what? Like I said, I thought the free man listening to them, don't give your license, don't do anything, don't step out of the car, don't do this, because then you're contracting with them is basically... What's the worst What's the worst that would have happened if you contracted with them? What's the worst that would have happened? I don't know. I do know. You would have got a ticket. That's the worst that would have happened. He would have gave you a summons to appear in 30 days to explain what happened on the side of the road today. Okay, so you're getting it. Just comply, and if you get a ticket, then you can work with that. Yeah, when you right when you get what right when you get a ticket, you show up in court in thirty days and you explain what the hell happened on the side of the road. Okay. Yeah, that's all. And then now it's my turn to explain what happened on the side of the road, just like I'm doing right now. I got a case going where the cops stopped me, and I didn't have a license plate or a tag on my trailer, on my farm trailer. The judge said, "Oh hell, it's a farm trailer." I said, "Yeah." He says, "You don't need a tag on your trailer." I said, "Yeah, I know. You know that, and he knows that. We all know that." He says, well, no, just raise your right hand and swear there was a farm trailer. I said, no, absolutely not. Right. He's like, why not? Because I want my day in court. And I'm going to stop this once and for all. And I don't, I find a breach the peace. There's no reason to stop me. I want to be stopped because I breached the peace. I don't want to be stopped because of a silly uh, uh, code violation anymore. 
I want to be stopped because I breached the peace. Now, if I breach the peace, you know, you could, you, 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 could, you could pull me over and you could cite me and I'll pay the fines, the penalties, and the damages because I breached the peace. But I didn't breach the peace. And I know I didn't breach the peace, and he knows I didn't breach the peace. But you're not just going to stop me every five feet because you, you're like, well, you know, uh, you don't have a tag on your vehicle. Okay, so did I breach the peace? Did anybody accrue a financial loss? Did anybody be harmed or injured by my actions or inactions? No. Then what is this about? This is just your belief that you could tell me that I have to put a license plate on my property and my vehicle, and how much? What happens? This what happens? This license plate costs ten thousand dollars next year. Am I supposed to not take my trailer down the road because I can't afford a ten thousand dollar license plate? Right. There's been many years in my life when I couldn't afford twenty dollars to put it on a stupid trailer. Right. I so, know. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I don't understand why when you got stopped by a cop, I don't care how much you hate the bastard. I don't understand why you just don't say, you know what, I'll deal with this in court instead of spending $10,000 worth of fines and five years in jail. I don't understand whether you thought that was a benefit to you or anybody in your family to have to deal with this bullshit. Right. I just went the wrong way, Carl. I wish I would have met you before. Yeah, but I'm trying to say is, you know, everybody's... Well, now I know. Well, I'm telling you, I'm 15, 16, 17 years old when everybody gets their driver's licenses. Everybody's like, look, when a cop pulls you over, man... Let's just be as sweet as pie to this guy. You know, keep your attitude for your husband. You want to give anybody shit, give it to your husband. Well, I guess I just got left along the way. Yeah, well, like I said, I guess the only thing you could probably do now is just have to apologize for what happened on the side of the road. That you okay. let it escalate and let it get out of control and ask them, is there any damages or is there any, uh, any harm or injury to that cop? And uh, if there is, just send me the bill and I'll make it square with the man. I'm sorry if I gave him any shit on the side of the road. Okay. Yeah, because honestly, that's the only common law way out of this. Is you, like I said, when the, even a man got his the, his face kicked in by a cop, man, I told him, apologize for having your face in the, in the way of the policeman's boot. Apologize for having your face in the way of the policeman's fist. Say, so, you know, whatever you did or didn't do led that man to hit you. Now, when we go to trial, when we go in front of a jury, and you're going to say, look, I apologize for the policeman having to beat the crap out of me. I'm sorry my head was so hard, and I'm sorry I hit my, his fist you know, hit my head, and my head was in the way. I'm sorry about that. And then the jury's going to have to hear that. The jury's going to be like, what? He did what to you? He punched me in the face. Why? Because I want to get out of my seat. What? I want to get out of the seat in, in the courtroom. So they beat the shit out of me. Oh, really? And I apologize to the cops for having punched me in the face so many times and kicked me in the face with their boots. I'm sorry if I scuffed their boots. And the jury said, that's ridiculous. You shouldn't have to apologize for that. They shouldn't, they shouldn't have kicked you. Well, that's what I feel, too. But, you know, just in case it's my fault, you know what? I, I'm apologizing. I'm sorry. Well, and the jury will say, no, it's not your fault. They know better. They shouldn't be kicking you like that. What did you do? Did you fight back? No, I just laid down and let them kick that shit out of me. Why? Because I'm not stupid enough to raise my hand to a cop. I don't want to get right. killed. They got guns. Yeah, they got guns. Yeah, so that's why when you get pulled over the side of the road, you just say, hey, you know what? You know, I'm going I'm going peacefully. Like, look what's going on with me and my kid. They got my kid in custody. You don't think my kid could just call me up right now? She knows my phone number. You don't think my kid knows send me an email right now and say, hey, Daddy, go meet, uh, I'm going to walk down to 7-Eleven. Pick me up at 7-Eleven. Get me out of here. Uh, honey, they got guns. Honey, they're going to shoot me. They're going to kill me. Okay, I'm not stupid. Kid, just hang in there. You know what? I'm going to use paper, pen, and ink. And I'm going to run them through the court. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to be stupid enough to fight with these guys who have 10,000 guns pointed at me. They're going to win. Yeah, so like I said, if you don't know how to act in public and just say, oh, the other guys with the guns, oh, the other guys are going to kill me. Oh, the other guys with the tasers, oh, they're the ones that are going to light me up. Uh, you know what? I better settle this on a courtroom with a piece of paper. Because out here in the street, they're going to kill me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why I handle my problems with these guys. I know. I was just too scared, and I guess I got—I let my fear get ahead of me. I have no idea why you were scared, because you said you were just coming home from work. Right. Cause you were saying you were coming home from work. What time is that? Uh, about 8.30 at night. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What, you, you got out of work at 5, and you crashed at the bar until about 8.30? No, me and my husband <clears throat> do our own construction, and we've been working really hard getting this house done. A big house, and we've been putting in <clears throat> a lot of hours, seven days a week. 
All right. So, like I said, why did he get you a DUI? What was that? What was the proof? I mean, did he have any bottles of alcohol he pulled out of your vehicle? What's he got? Well, I'm sure he had bottles. I hold my trash. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's going to get you. Yeah. He's going to get you from an open container. Yeah. Yeah. So, how are you going to explain why you have an open container in your vehicle? The only reason I have problems with him is because he is a very ego. And? Um, he's got guns. So, what? Everybody he has could, a gorilla. He could be a gorilla and he's got a gun. What do they want to do? Kick a gorilla in the nuts? Well, no. <laughs> no, he's a gorilla. What am I going to do to a gorilla? I'm just going to say, hey, Mr. Gorilla, don't kill me. Not you. You say, hey, Mr. Gorilla, kill me. Light me up. Especially if you know he's a gorilla and he's had, he had problems with him in the past. Why would okay. you be crazy enough to mess with a gorilla? Well, I wasn't being crazy to mess with the gorilla. I just wanted the sheriff there so I could deal with them over him. Yeah, well, what happened with the sheriff? Uh, you know, he was out of town. Then what are you going to do? Sit there on the side of the road for a week or two until the sheriff decides to show up? <laughs> and he says, lady, look, I ain't playing no games with you nonsense. I got, I got better things to do. Get your damn ass out of the car. You're in the public. You act in the public. You act like a lady in the public. You don't want to act like a lady in the public. That's how I'm going to act towards you. Well, that's what I'm saying. You have to act in, like when I go to, in the public, man. I have to act like a man. Right. I, and when you want you're in the public, you have to act like a lady. If you want to be treated like one, you act like one. If you don't want to be treated like one, don't act like one. I got you. I understand now. Well, that helps out a lot, and I appreciate that. Well, that's all you have to do is just basically write a letter, say, I'm sorry I didn't act ladylike in the public. I'm sorry I didn't fail to act in a proper manner. I mean, that's that's what I had to get some guy in West Virginia out of fighting with the cops in West Virginia. I think he got into a fight with two cops. He was charged with assault and battery on two cops. He was drunk and uh, domestic violence. And all we did was write a massive amount of apology letters and saying, can you please give us the damn bill? And that's how he got out of all his felonies. Yeah, pretty simple. Yes, that is. Yeah, you can just say shit. You know, you just say, you know what, maybe I did fuck up. Maybe I wasn't acting ladylike, or maybe I wasn't acting like a gentleman. Maybe I should, was drinking. Maybe I, I shouldn't have done what I did. Just hand me the bills, and I'll make it all, and, and I'll cover everybody. The guy knows he was guilty. The guy in West Virginia, he knows he was guilty. He knows what he did. You know, the, the cops gave him shit, and there was a woman cop and a guy, and he was like, I ain't going easy. He's like, I ain't going down easy. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. You know, like I said, if there was no cops around, you'd say, hey, man, you know, when you need a cop, then all of a sudden you're like, hey, man, you know, I wish there was a cop around. You know, then when they are around, man, you're not supposed to give them any shit. You're supposed to say, look, and that's, look, I'm telling you, man, I've gotten arrested so many freaking times in my life. And I'm telling you, when I get pulled out of my truck or something like that, I, the very first thing I do, I have my, my hand so far out the mirror. And I said, I used to have these extended mirrors. I said, look, if you, if you feel, if you want to, I said, it would make me comfortable, too. Can you handcuff me to uh, my mirrors, to my door, to my wallet on the roof? My driver's license registration is up on the roof. So why do you want me to handcuff you to the mirrors? Says school, when they find a bullet in my head, that they're going to find handcuff marks on my wrist because obviously I was, uh, you know, and I'm going to have the mirror pulled in. You know, when you shoot me in the head, my body's, body's going to snap in half. And I said, at least I'll pull the mirror through the window. And they'll say, how did this mirror get detached from his door? He must have been handcuffed. I said, I don't, want, I don't want no accidents here, sir. I want to go home. I want to see my wife and kids someday. And I know you want to go see your wife and kids. So if, if you want to, please handcuff me to my mirror. I don't want no accidents. Just give me the damn ticket, whatever I did. I'll pay you whatever you want me to pay you. I just want to go home alive. I want to make it out of here alive tonight. You want to put me in jail, that's fine. Let me make a phone call on my cell phone and get somebody to come here and pick up my truck and my tools. I'm going to leave my truck and tools on the side of the highway. And a couple of times I had gotten arrested on the side of the highway. And a couple of times the cops actually stood with me behind my truck until the tow truck came and took my tow truck off the side of the highway and put it into a police impound yard. And they made sure nobody stole my tools. Now, if I gave them shit, they would have brought it to a police impound yard. And when I got out of jail, all my tools would have been stripped out of my truck. And the cops would have said, hey, it's a bad neighborhood we have around here on a police yard. You know, shit happens, man. Sorry you lost all your tools. Right. Sometimes, please let me use my cell phone. I called another contractor who I know is in the area. Said, "Hey, man, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna book me. Him, I'll probably be gone for the weekend. Uh, catch you on Monday. Uh, if you don't mind, can you can you can you come on down here and secure my truck and tools?" And they'll be like, "Yeah, we'll we'll be right down." And I'll get a friend to come on down and secure my truck. 
But like I said, that's because I'm not an asshole to these cops. The very first thing I said, hey, let's do this quick and painless as possible. I know you want to go home to your wife and kids, and I want to go home to my wife and kids. So whatever goes down, sir, believe me, I am absolutely no threat to you whatsoever. I just want you to go home and see your wife and kids, and someday I want to go home and see my wife and kids. Let's do this as quickly and painlessly as possible. And they appreciate it. They're not afraid I'm going to come flying out of the truck with a stick or a knife or a bat or a gun, you know, because I'm a big, goofy-looking dude. You know, I'm sure they appreciate the the way I talk to them and the way I act. It's like, look, do what, do what you got to do. That's what helps with me being so big and goofy looking my whole life because I know the natural reaction people have when they see me. The first thing they want to do is pull their guns, and it's, it's illegal and unlawful to pull your guns on a man unless there's been a crime committed. You can't pull a gun because the guy crossed the double yellow line. But these guys will pull a gun. When they see me in a car, man, they got no problem pulling their guns and saying, whoa, buddy. Get out of the vehicle real slow. Got that. Yeah. And that's why before they even get to that point, my hands are so far out of the freaking window. Right. See, I put them at ease. Right. And see, that's what I'm saying. That's when they did that with me in social services with my kids. I didn't threaten them. I said, look, if you take my kids, I'll come up here and blow this bill. I didn't say anything like that. Right. I said, oh, you're going to take my kids? Guess what? I know you're going to take my kids. You know what? I guarantee it. You just take one look at me and you think it's going to be a piece of cake you know, stealing my kids and convincing the court to keep me from ever seeing my kids because I'm such a goofy-looking dude. I said, that's fine. I got no problem with that. You know what? Take any of my property. Take my kids. Take my hula hoops. Take my dogs. Take my cars. Take whatever the hell you want. Any of my property, it's all yours. Take whatever you wish. I said, just remember, if you don't return it, I'm going to seek compensation. And I charge a lot of money when somebody walks off of my property. So do as you wish and take whatever you want, whether it's a car, a dog, a child, a Oh. A hula hoop, I don't care what you take. Any of my property you wish to take, you may take. Why? Because you've got a lot of guns. And guess what? You're going to take it anyway. But if you don't return it, I said, I'm going to claim that you did, you know, you claim, I'm going to claim a trespass and you're going to compensate me. I said, you better have a damn good reason why you're taking and carrying off my property. And right now, this is driving uh, Virginia, wherever the hell I am, Virginia, crazy. Because they're like, wow, Carl never lost custody of his kids. No. He never lost legal or lawful custody of his kids, no. There's no court order ever saying the call can't have his kids with him 24-7, no. There's no court order that exists on planet Earth that says that. The call can't have his kids anytime he wants them. Anytime he wishes them to be next to him, there's no power on Earth that's supposed to be able to stop me. I haven't done anything wrong to them or to anybody. So they're like, holy shit, we really fucked up. And yeah, it wouldn't be the first time a state government fucked up if you look at me. So the only thing you got to do is like what I did again in West Virginia. You got to write to the prosecuting attorney and you got to explain to him, I'm sorry, I wasn't acting very uh, uh, manly or and acting publicly very ladylike. And, uh, you know, I had bad experience with this man in the past. And uh, if there's any harm or loss or whatever, I, my debt to society, I want to pay my debt to society. Can you attend to me in the bill? How much did it cost to have that guy, uh, you know, recharge his battery on his tasers? How much did the guy to get, uh, you know, to get a, the the soil out of his pants and his uniform for me beating him like I did. You know, and he'll say, "There's no, this is the lady. There's there's no debt. You know, we we didn't. There's no bill." So it's like, "Oh, okay. So at least the judge will see that you're trying to pay your debt to society." Okay. Yeah, and that's the big thing they want. They want to see that you're willing to pay your debt to society. That's why everybody goes to jail. It's because you owe a debt to society. That's never that when you taught that since you were a little kid. The reason why you go to jail is because you got to pay your debt to society. So what you're trying to do is trying to find anybody in society that you believe that owes that you owe them a debt. And the judge says you're guilty or not guilty. So when the judge said that he, she's going to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf, that's saying that to the world, I don't believe I owe a debt. And they're going to try to prove that you do owe a debt. Ah. Yeah. So you want to you want to tell them show me the damn debt. He's like, if you think I'm guilty, if you think I owe a debt, because the word guilty and debt means the same in German. It's the same word, debt and guilt, same word. They just want to see that you owe a debt. And they're going to show, well, you owe a debt because you did this, you did this, you did this. It's like, okay, fine. I did this, I did You do that before you go to damn trial. You say, okay, fine. I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. Okay, how much does that all cost? How much does it cost? It's like, well, you did this, you fought with a cop. Okay, how much did that cost fighting with a cop? How much damage did I do to his taser? How much damage did I do to his uniform? How much damage did I do to his body? Well, he had to recharge his batteries, and, you know, that cost about 63 cents. I was like, okay, what else What else is the debt? The debt? 
while he had to stay away from other calls because he had to dick around with you for two hours. I was like, okay, how much do you pay him by the hour? 20 bucks. Okay, so that's 40 bucks worth of cop time. Okay, fine. What else do I owe? Well, they had to drive you down to the police department. Okay, so that's uh, 17 cents in gas. Okay, what else do I owe? Tell me to give you an itemized list of all the damages, all the expenditures, of all the costs. Okay. So you can pay the damn debt to society. And what they'll tell you is probably what they told the West Virginia guy. He said, no, that's the reason why you pay taxes. You pay taxes because that then it pays all the debt of the police, the use of the police service. Because there was a benefit that the police came and arrested that guy that night because he was drunk and that he was fighting. Really? So the police were up and arrested him. And he didn't understand the wonderful benefits the police department provided for him. Because him being drunk and might have escalated, might have got out of control, he might have killed his uh, uh, wife or that other guy that was there. Yeah, because something stupid. Yeah, so the police were able to stop it before it got out of hand because him and his wife kissed and made up a couple of days later. Exactly. Yeah, so thank God the cop was there to stop it from escalating. Right. I see yeah. the point of having police protect and serve. Awesome, great, you know. But I just don't see where they can just attack people for just because they want to. You're in the public. You're, in, you're not in the private. They can't come into your house. See, if they if they came out to your yard and did that to you or in your driveway or came uh-huh. into your house and did it, my story would be completely opposite. I'd say you go nail that bastard for everything he's got. Okay. But you're in the public. You've got to learn how to act in the public. You're, you're an actress. You're acting. You have to act like a lady in the public. At home, you can act like a you can act like a two dollar whore at home. <laughs> you, can, you can you can act like a drunk at home. But you can't act like a drunk in the public. You can't act like a two dollar whore in the public. They're going to shut you down. But you get into that house, you close that door, you act any damn way you want. But you acting in the public, people expect a certain uh, decorum, a certain courtesy, a certain courtesy, a certain politeness, a certain, you know, a certain respect towards each other. You don't want to give it to that community. That community got every right to shut you the hell down and get you the hell out of there. Like I said, one of the best examples I always give is that Rambo movie. Some clown came to my, and I was the sheriff, and looked like that Rambo guy. Oh, man, I would have made about a thousand little uh, uh, toothpicks out of his Rambo knife. I was like, oh, and here's your knife back. Oh, here's your knife back? Oh, I would have, it would have been, it looked like a curly fry when I gave it back to him. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, and, and here's your toothpick. You know, enjoy enjoy using your knife now, asshole. You know, get you know, here's 50 bucks. You know, get on that bus, and, and I better never see you back in my town again. I mean, that, that guy was on, that, that movie was unbelievable. I was like, Rambo's like, well, I'm going to walk around this neighborhood and I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. I'm going to carry a sword and I'm going to scare the living shit out of everybody. Fuck them. I fought in Vietnam. I could do whatever I want. I was like, oh, really? You're going to walk around my town with a with a mini sword, scaring the living shit out of everybody, just in a, in, in, in a, you know, just like that, really? No, I think you're going to, I'm the sheriff of this town and I'm going to make sure there's a nice, quiet, clean, simple town. People pay me to protect and serve. You want to act like a little uh, maniac? You're going to do it someplace else. Now, people would say to me, well, call. Oh, people got the right to bear arms. People, I say, yeah, right. I'm not going to let a guy walk, you know, through past the elementary school with a machine gun. He ain't doing it in my damn town. It's like, well, I'll sue you. You know what? Sue me. Well, I'm the sheriff. You know, you're the sheriff and you got um, the Constitution. I don't give a damn what the Constitution says. I'm going to let some maniac just to say, well, I got a constitutional right to walk out with a machine gun past a nursing home or an elementary school or uh, uh, an orphanage, and he's just going to keep walking in front of that orphanage with a with a bazooka. Oh, really? And you think you got that right? Yeah, absolutely. Pal, you're in the public. You're not in the private. You want to do that? Do it in the private. You doing it in the public? We're going to shut you down. Why? Because the public has a certain expectation of being peaceful and tranquil within the common grounds. And you're breaking the peace. And you're scaring the shit out of an awful lot of people. And you want to do that in your house? You want to do it in your yard? That's fine. Don't be coming out here with no damn bazooka and think you're going to walk down Main Street and scare the living bejesus out of everybody. Everybody crashes their cars and everybody's climbing up telephone poles to get the hell away from you. Don't, 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 don't think you're going to walk your gorilla down the sidewalk. Well, he's a nice gorilla. He, dude, it's a different gorilla. Well, then uh, he's not going to hurt nobody. Dude, we don't know what he's going to do. Well, that's speculation and conjecture. You know, you're, you're already condemning him before he's done something wrong. It's like, look, you're in a public. As a public, you have a, you have a, you have a social contract. You have a contract with those within the society to act in a certain manner. 
And if you don't understand how we flow here, how we roll, you know, why don't you go up to the mountain somewhere? Why don't you go get a, a Gilligan's Island and, and go walk around with your gorilla monkey all day long on an island? But you ain't walking down Main Street with a gorilla and carrying a bazooka. It ain't going to happen. Not, not when I'm the cop. Not when I'm, not when I'm the sheriff. Well, I got rights. But dude, you got the rights in the private, not in the public. In the public, you have duties, obligations, and responsibilities to your fellow man. In the private, you have all your rights. Your rights stop where my rights begin. I have the right to be in peace and have a nice, tranquil walk down this street. I have the right to just walk the common grounds and be in peace and enjoy my time on planet Earth. If you think you're going to come here and scare the living bejesus out of because you know what you're doing is scaring the living bejesus out of everybody. Now, if the guy's Tarzan and he comes out of the jungle and he's buck naked and he's swinging a monkey off his left hip, well, obviously the guy's an idiot because he's from the freaking jungle and he doesn't know societal decorum. He doesn't know how he's supposed to act in the public. So, of course, you're going to give that guy a pass. You're going to say, hey, look, uh, Tarzan, um, we don't swing from the vine like that down here. You know what? you, you got to throw one of these rags on you. What? what what's a rag? Uh, dude, this. You, you know, let, let, me just, here, let me just wrap it around you. Well, no, I'm not going to take that. Oh, dude, then you got to get the hell out of here. Dude, you can't just, you, you just can't be floating free like that. You know, there's, there's women that are chilling here. We, you know, well, that's God's body. Yeah, that's God's creation. Yeah, 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 we understand that. But you know what? It, it don't hang like that here. You know, you got to move it on. You, you got to keep it going down the road. We, we can't tolerate that here. And you got to respect it because you're in a public. And the public has a certain, uh, you know, expectation to what we expect from each other when we act in a public. And it's, it's you know, like I said, it's if people want to say, well, you know, what call when, well, where can we do this? You do it in a private. You go home and swing from your chandeliers all you want. Go bang a monkey. I don't give a damn what you're doing at home. Just, you better not be doing it in a public. You know, there is a, there is a difference between private and public. It's like, it's very simply, it's like, say, almost what's going on with Frank, my my, uh, uh, my mom's husband, and my kid. The government wants to say that uh, Frank um, did something horrible to my daughter. I was like, okay, that's fine. Frank did something very horrible to my daughter. Let's just say for shits and giggles he did. Let's just say he did the most horrible, horrendous things to my daughter. And I asked this, the government one simple question. Did he do it in the private or did he do it in the public? He all he did it in a private. So that isn't that a private domestic authority, a domestic affair? Well, no, because um, you know he did a horrible, horrendous thing. He uh, murdered your daughter. Yeah, but again, you write public laws, right? Okay, this happened in a private. Yes. Okay, so wouldn't it be up to me to determine what happens to him? Why does the state believe that they have an interest in what happened in a private? In a private. It happened in my castle, under my watch. I'm the king of this castle. You're a king of another, you're another, of another realm. You're the king of the public. I'm the king of the private. If I need your help, I'll let you know. If I don't need your help, you know what? You can't come in. He's like, you're just going to let it go. Yes, I'm just going to let it go. You're just going to forgive. I'm just going to forgive. You're just going to let the guy get away with it. I'm going to say, you know what? If I wish to forgive him, he's going to have to meet his creator someday. Someday he's going to die. And I'm not going to punish him on earth. If God wants to punish him in heaven or hell, that's God's prerogative, but it's not mine. And like, well, no, that's ridiculous. No, it's called Judeo-Christian beliefs. And you have a Judeo belief where if Frank kills my kid, you get to kill Frank. I might have a Christian belief that says if, if he kills my daughter, I turn the other cheek. Well, that's crazy. Well, that's what Jesus Christ said, too. And I thought he was pretty freaking crazy. But you know what? I think the guy is right. And if I want to believe Jesus Christ is right, who are you to tell me I gotta let you murder Frank and I gotta help you murder him? I gotta help you kill him because he killed my daughter. I gotta go eye for eye, tooth for tooth. What if I don't want him? What if I want to turn the other cheek? Well you can't turn the other cheek. Why not? For a call that's that wouldn't be right. Why not? It was okay for Jesus. If it was okay for Jesus, it's not okay for me to forgive the trespass. I'm not supposed to forgive his trespass against my child. Okay, what trespass can I forgive him? I could forgive him if he trespassed what? If he takes a bar of soap from me, then, then I could forgive him. Or if he takes five dollars, I could forgive him. But if he kills my kid, I can't forgive him. I thought we lived in a Judeo-Christian land. I thought we were supposed to forgive our trespasses, as we would wish them to forgive us of our trespasses. I thought that's what we were supposed to do. I thought that's what made America great. 
I thought we didn't live in the world of Palestine or Israel or Judea. I thought we lived in America. I thought we lived in a Christian land. I didn't know we lived in a Judeo land. I didn't know that the United States of America turned Jewish. So all these people that want me to hang Frank say Frank did kill my kid. And I said, no, I'm going to let him go. What? You're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to let him go? What? That's between me and Frank. If I, want to talk, if I want to do something to Frank, that's between me, Frank, and God. It has nothing to do with the people in the public. Did he kill your kid? No. He killed mine. All right. Then I'll determine what I want to do or not do with Frank. It happened in a private. It's like, well, Paul, you're supposed to uh, let the government put Frank in a cage. Look, I don't want to be a part of it. If I just say, look, I don't I want to play the Christian role. I just want to forgive him of his trespass. No, call, you can't. A guy like that's got to go to 20 years jail for 20 years. Okay, look, if you want to be Jewish, if you want to do Old Testament on him, if you want to be what you call these, you know, you hate, you people always say, these people who do these uh, shows, oh, I hate those Jewish people. This, go, this country is turning all Jewish. Oh, the Jewish media and the Jewish this and the Jewish that. They're like, okay, well, if Frank did something horrible to my kid, what should I do? Oh, Frank should go to jail for 20 years. Okay, then you're Jewish. I'm not Jewish. Yes, you are. You're Jewish. Well, how many years should Frank get? Well, you should at least get six months or a year. Then you're Jewish. What? You're Jewish. What did, what did Jesus say? Turn the other cheek and forgive and forget and go on with your life. Well, that's ridiculous. No, it's not. If you believe that your world is this world and there is nothing else but this world, you're Jewish. If you believe that if you forgive the trespass of others and then God's going to reward you in the next world, well, then you're Christian. If you people don't like the fact that I'm Christian and I'm not Jewish, you're listening to the wrong fucking show. If you want me to go eye for eye for Frank, I'm not going to do it. I could. I could go Judea on him. I could go old school. I could go Old Testament on him. I could act Jewish. But what am I above all that? If I'm, oh, I'm over it. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. What? I'm not a kid anymore. What? I'm a man now. I know there's more going on than just whatever silly uh, shit's going on here on planet Earth right now. I, I think there's more to this. I think there's a hell of a game. I think there's a hell of a, uh, an opportunity here to forgive and forget and teach people how to forgive and forget. Just like I'm going to tell my daughter. I, you know, obviously we're just writing simple emails back and forth to each other. The only thing I said to her about Grandpa is I'm trying to help Grandpa. That's all I said to her. I'm trying to help Grandpa. Now, maybe in the next two or three emails she'll write to me. She'll say something about Grandpa. So I'll ask her, do you know why you're in foster care? And if she says yes or no, I'll say, okay, why do you think you're there? If she says, I don't know. It's like, well, they said Grandpa did something to you. Do you remember what Grandpa did? And I'm going to ask her a simple question. What do, you th- what, what do you believe Grandpa did? And she's going to tell me if she did something or he did nothing. Say he, say he did something. Oh, Grandpa did this, Grandpa did that. I say, well, what do you think we should do? Do you think we should just say, you know, Grandpa, that wasn't very nice and you shouldn't have done it? And we, we should all just, you know, kiss and make up and just say, you know what, please don't let that happen again? Or do you think we should say, Grandpa, you should hang Grandpa, you should spend the rest of your life in jail and die. What what should we do to Grandpa? I'm going to ask her. And just want to see where her mind is at and see how she was raised and how she was reared compared to how I was reared and how I was raised. And see where her mind is at. I'd be impressed if she just says, you know what? You know, Grandpa shouldn't have done it. You know, but this is this is worse than what Grandpa did. So, you know what? Honestly, I just want everything to go back to the way it was. And just hope Grandpa don't do that again. I was like, okay, kid. Um, hopefully she's going to say that, or she's going to say, you know what, Grandpa didn't do a damn thing. I just wanted to say it uh, because Grandpa embarrassed me in front of my boyfriend. I said, okay, kid, that's fine. Then then you know what, you, you know, you, you, you lied, and uh, now we're going to have to deal with you in a whole different way. Now we're going to have to worry that you might lie about me or your brother or your uncle or Grandpa again or Grandma, so we're going to have to treat you different. You understand, right? It's not going to go back to the way it was. If Grandpa did do something, obviously it's not going to go back that way. Grandpa's going to have to leave. And if it goes, if you're the one who lied, obviously we're going to have to treat you different. You know, I said, you're going to have to, like, wear a body camera. So it's going to look like a pack of cigarettes hanging from your pocket. But, you know, we're going to have to protect other people from you telling a story again. So, like I said, it's all kinds of things that what might, if, what might, what might not happen depends on when I'm talking to her 
what she tells me. And right now, she seems to uh, really respect me, and she doesn't talk to anybody else, but she, she, she's emailing me, and she's talking to me. My mom went up to me the other day, and she said, she said, no, your kid didn't say one damn word to me. She said she just looks at me every time I come up there. She doesn't say hello. She doesn't say goodbye. She just looks at, 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 at my mom. I said, well, maybe she doesn't trust you. I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure she trusts me. Right. So I'm going to see how this works out with the kid, you know, if she's going to talk to me. You know, and like I said, and that, that's the whole thing with the society, and that's what the whole thing that happened with West Virginia, with the man from West Virginia. He asked them to forgive him of his trespass, of his debt. And the court said, absolutely, not a problem. And it was all gone. And he's like, holy shit, Carl, that was easy. I was like, yeah, if you seem sincere, if you seem to be real about it, you can't just say, you know, can't be a smug little punk because you still got to convince that judge that you're really sincere, that you're not going to let it happen again and you're, you're very sorry for what happened. You're going to, you're going to man up to it. Oops, and you're going to, you know what, I'm sorry that it happened and um, I'll never have let it happen again. I'll do my best. You know, and that's the, and the judge and everybody's like, that's what we wanted to hear. Okay. It, it's silly because it's so simple. It's like you were taught that when you were a little kid, when you were three, four, five years old. Right. It's so funny. I, I forgot some stuff that my kid has been doing, uh, even like my bro- little brother, my brother Frankie, he's 32 years old. When, when they do stupid things and they break things around here, it's just stupid things happen. You know, and I just say, hey, don't worry about it. You know, it's all going to, you know, be dust one day anyway. Don't worry about it. See, you broke it. It's no big deal, kid. You know, as long as you didn't do it deliberately, that's okay. And if you did do it deliberately, do you understand that that's going to cost? And do you understand now we're going to have to do something different? Do you understand? My little brother Frankie did that. He was 33 years old. And when he was five years old, I walked outside to my tractor, and all the gauges, all the glass on the gauges was busted. Oh. So I, I, walked, I walked around, and I saw him outside with a hammer. I said, uh, come here, kid. He was like five years old. I said, uh, uh, tell me a little story. What happened here? And he just looked down at the ground. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Let me, let me take a wild guess. You just decided to bust all the gauges, the, the glass out of the gauges. Yeah, I said, okay, kid. You know what? Honestly, I love breaking glass, too. I said, I, I said, I enjoy breaking glass. I said, here, come on out of the ball with me. So I found a whole bunch of plate glass. I found a whole bunch of bottles. I found a whole bunch of junky glass laying around. And we just started shooting up the glass. I said, there you go, kid. Here, now shoot the glass. And we just took like a little 22 and we started shooting the shit out of the glass. And he was laughing his ass off. I said, now that's how you break glass. I said, if you want to, if you want to break glass, you come find me. And we'll break glass all damn day. And I'll tell you what glass we could break. But you can't be breaking glass on cars, on motorcycles, on tractors. You can't just break glass there, okay? You understand? No no breaking glass on, like, this stuff, okay? You want to break glass? You come find me. We'll break glass all damn day. And he, we never had a problem again like that with him. But that's what I'm saying. I didn't yell up and down. I didn't scream and say, you goddamn bloody little bastard. Do you understand what's going to take to fix those damn gauges? My God, what the hell's wrong? No, I didn't do any of that shit. Come here. And you like to break glass? Yeah. Come with me. I'll show you some glass. Come. On. And that's the way I handle things. Because I know I'm going to be dead anyway. I could have died 10 seconds after he broke that glass. He could have broke that glass. And I could have took two steps at him, at him in anger. I could have tripped over a rock and broke my neck. And then that's how I went out in the world. Angry at the kid for a piece of broken glass. Right. That's not, that's not my style. It's just not my style. That's why I tell you people, when you go to court and you want to be like me, it's a style. It's a lifestyle. The judge can see it. The judge can tell. It's just, this guy's got a style. He's got a certain style. He's got a certain, like, what do you say, like a style, a charm, an elegance, a grace, a, a manner, a demeanor, a cadence, a rhythm. He, he's, got, he's, got, he's got a style. It's interesting because people are like, wow, that's not the usual typical reaction. It's the same thing that they said when they took my kid. They said, people don't usually act like this, Carl. They say, what did you want me to do, yell at you? You wanted me to get mad that you took my kid? Well, he just said that Grandpa did this to your daughter. Don't you want to kill the Grandpa? No. I want to get all the facts. I want to get all the information. If nothing horrible happened, we're just going to forgive it and go on. We're just going to say, you know what? We're going to keep a lot closer eye on what the hell's going on here. Thank you for the state's cooperation. Thank you for the state's aid and help. But we got it from here. We don't need any more aid and assistance. Thank you very much. Is there, and I asked the cops some very simple questions. Is she a virgin? Yes. Is there any torn clothing? No. Was she naked? No. Was he naked? No. 
Did anybody touch each other's body parts? No. Okay, then what are we talking about? Well, he was, you know, playing with her aggressively, like wrestling with, okay, really? According to who? You know, it's like, well, you know, he just was touching her inappropriately. According to who? You know, well, you know, she said some things to the guidance council. Okay, what did she say? Well, she said, uh, Grandpa was wrestling with a rough. Okay, really? I never hit anybody that I've known in his adult life. He's never struck any human being. He has, I don't know how many kids. He's got one, two, three, four kids. He's never hit any of them. How many grandkids he has? I don't have a freaking clue. But he's never hit anybody. He hasn't hit my mom in anger. And I went down to the sheriff's department and actually said that. I was talking to them. I said, he hasn't even hit my mom in anger. What? Oh, she'll double deal, backstab, live. She'll bullshit to get whatever she wants. She's a woman's prerogative. She's crafty. She's slick. She's sly. She, she knows how to get what she wants. And don't tell me my mom don't. Because Paul Frank said that to me about a month before he got a, uh, before this went down. He said to me, he says, um, Paul, I wanted to write out a will and try to give uh, my children some property here on his farm. And my attorney... You know, did a title search, and I don't own anything, Call. He was like, what? I said, he says, I don't own anything. What do you mean you don't own anything, Frank? He says, I don't own a damn thing. Your mom owns everything. She says she owns all the cars, the tractors, the trucks, all the farm implementation, all the tools. She owns the house. She owns the land. I said, yeah, my mom's a federal agent, an IRS agent. Yeah. What did you think she was doing while you were busy working for 33 years without a day off except for on Sunday? So you worked six days a week. What, what did you think she was doing? She was nesting. She was she was doing a woman's thing. She was building a nest egg. Yeah, go ahead and divorce her. Go ahead and leave. Go ahead and do whatever the fuck you want. She's not going to give a damn. Guess what? Because you're going to walk out of here with nothing. She says, holy cow, I, I can't believe she did that to me. I said, dude, it's a woman's prerogative. She's building a nest. She's building a fun. She's building a, 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 like a little like a little cloister here. She's, she's building her little nest egg. Yes, you're giving her money. It was so funny watching him go to bail bond hearing. It was hysterical. The guy's worked for 33 years. He actually asked me that, uh, you know, uh, back in August or July. He says, oh, thank God, Carl, you came back. He says, I haven't had a vacation in 33 years. Remember when I last time had a vacation? I said, yeah, when you dropped Frankie off when he was a baby with me and my sister. And you said, and you get your mom and you, you went upstate New York for a weekend. I said, yeah, that's the last time I had a vacation for two days in the last 33 years. I said, yeah, Frank, it kind of sucks being married to my mom. She drives you like a mule, doesn't she? He's like, yeah. She never gives me a, a minute of peace. I said, yeah, I can't believe you ain't snapped her in half. I said, God bless you, Frank. You're never getting that kind of anger and never hitting my mom. I said, I don't know how you do it. And, and then he's, like I said, about a, a month later, he says to me, Carl, I went to get a will written up, and my lawyer says, I don't know anything. She got everything transferred in her name. I said, yeah, she's a woman. That's what women do. I said, I could have told you that. I could have told you that when you met my mom when I was 16, 17 years old. I could have told you. She's a woman. She's going to make sure that she's got her ass covered for the rest of her life. So it was funny when he went to the bail bond hearing. It was hysterical when the the court court lady uh, was taking all this information down, and the judge said to him, uh, "Do you own any property? No. Do you own any land? No. I thought that was the Russo farm. And yes, you're Frank Russo. Yes, and that's Pat Russo. Well, Pat Russo, Pat Donna, Pat Lentz. Uh, yeah. No, she owns the farm. So you don't own that farm." And he had to say in court, no, I don't own that farm. So you don't own the land? No. I don't own the house? No. Do you own any cars or trucks? No. And he was saying with a straight face, and he was telling the truth. The judge said, okay, for all, you know, you're 65 years old. You work like every damn day since you were a 20-year-old kid. What do you own? He says, well, I got $200. She's like, what? He said, that's all I got. He said, I got two bank accounts, and I believe there's about $200 in two bank accounts. That's all I have. And I was like, <laughs> when I got outside of the courthouse, you better believe I said to my mom, I said, do you understand how pathetic that sounds? That this man is 65 years old. His, his, almost, his oldest daughter is almost 40. He's been working for 40 years with you. 40 years. Say he makes a minimum, a minimum, 35 grand a year. That's $1.2 million. And the guy's got $200 to his name. $200 to his name. I said, does it, does it kind of show the court and the world mom that, you know, he been working like this, like a dog for all these years and he's got nothing and you got everything? Like your little uh, nest egg's got to be well worth over a million dollars and he's worth $200? I said, do you understand how sad this sounds, mom? 
I said, but I said, Mom, said, don't worry about it. It's a woman's prerogative. And he just doesn't understand women. I do. He didn't understand that it's you were doing to him all these years. He thought that you guys were partners, that you guys were equals. He was like, well, yeah, if he wants to live with me for the rest of his life, he can have the farm and he can share in the farm and he can share in the cars and the trucks and the vans. I said, what do you mean sharing it? She's like, oh, yeah, I want to make sure if he leaves, he leaves with nothing. But if he stays with me and he plays ball and we get along fine and he doesn't hit me and I don't divorce him, I'll let him have half. You let him have half. And he's worked for everything. I said, isn't that just special? And again, like I say to guys, hey, this is a woman's prerogative. She didn't do anything evil. She didn't do anything bad to the guy. She's a woman. That's what women do. You know, you, you didn't marry a guy. You married a woman and you don't know the rules. And you understand that's what women do. They build a nest egg to protect themselves for the future in case the guy drops dead, dies, or runs off and ma- marries somebody else, you know, half a race. What do you think my mom was supposed to do? Trust the guy that he was going to stick around for the rest of his life and not fool around or not, not beat her, not whatever. It's like, oh, hell no. My mom's like, oh, no, man, I'm, I'm building my corner. I'm building my wall. Uh-uh. I'm building my nest egg. Uh-uh. No, my nice guy. I don't trust nobody. So that was her prerogative. She's like, I don't trust a damn. I don't trust anybody. Hell no. I'm going to build up my little nest egg. And that's what I told her. I said, look, Mom. I said, I explained explain this to you. I said, they're coming after Frank. But when they find out you got the money, they're going to come after you. And when they come after you, you're going to have to give everything you got to some stupid attorney. Because they're going to come after you next. Because they're going to find out you got the money. And that's what I see so many people saying. me that The elderly people are telling me, call them 50, 60, 70, 80 years old and I filled out an IRS tax return, and they said I filled it out wrong. And they're going to charge me with $300,000 in fines and penalties, and I'm going to have to sell everything I got to keep me out of jail. I said, yeah, well, welcome to the United States. What do you think they're going to do to you? Let you uh, pass your money off to your children? Like die and leave a will? Is, is that what you thought was going to happen? Where do you think you live? You live in the United States. You're not, get, you're not getting out of this world with anything. The government's going to take everything from you before you die. I said, what do you think these lawyers do for a living? You think they get their hands dirty and they and they build dirty and they 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 they, they build they build or dig a hole? No, these lawyers live off of, of working. They live off of another man's sweat. They're parasites. Yes, is a lawyer good for certain things? Yes, for for creating a will, for uh, going over real estate, going over mortgage plans with you. But that's it. To actually intercourse with a living, breathing man is ridiculous. This should, no man should have to need another man to, to act, carry him through the court. You should, you know, if you do something wrong, you should know how to pay your own damn debt back to society. You should know how to write back to the cop. You should know how to write to the judge in the court. Say, holy shit, I'm sorry I owe debt to society. I'm sorry I did what I did. How do I make this whole? How do I make it square? I had a really bad day. I wasn't acting very manly and probably wasn't acting very ladylike. I'm sorry. How do I square this up? Can you please tend to me the bill? And that's all they want to see. That's all the judge wants to see. The judge just wants to see that you're going to, that, that when he lets you go, that you're going to pose no more threat to the community, that you're not going to act like a little crazed animal. He's not going to let a, a, a gorilla run back to the streets. He's not going to do it. Like I said in the movie Rambo, I can't believe that sheriff let that guy, you know, back in the streets. Like, dude, you had him. And look what happened when you let him go. Look what he came back to give you. What, are you crazy? Why don't you give them a... Las Vegas did that. Las Vegas used to give people one-way tickets on Greyhound or Amtrak anywhere in the country they wanted to go. If you were homeless and you wanted them in Vegas and they called you and vagrancy laws down there, they'd give you a one-way ticket and send you back home. And uh, the... Uh, what do they call it? What's the name of that people? Uh, not the AFL. It's uh, ACLU. Sued the city of Las Vegas for doing that. So they lost like millions of dollars in a stupid lawsuit. So Las Vegas said no more of this. So what they did is they took the city of Las Vegas and made it private property. And they leased it out to all of the um, casinos down there and all of the shops and all the stores. The whole entire five streets by three streets, the city blocks as private property down there. So if you come into the downtown Las Vegas area, you're on private property. You're like stepping into somebody's house. And if they say you're trespassing, they'll give you a warning if you look homeless. They'll stop you and say, you got $100 on you. And the homeless guy say, no. Well, then you're trespassing. you got to leave. Oh, okay. You know, and then they'll leave. And then two seconds later, they come around the corner. They come from another angle, and they think they're coming back downtown, but they're coming back into somebody's house. Now you're going to jail, buddy. And then they would take the homeless guy, and they say, look, he's going to cost you $1,000 on one year in jail. What's your pleasure? 
And they say, well, I ain't got $1,000, so they put you in jail for a year. But at least when they put you in jail, they put you in jail where O.J. Simpson is, about 90 miles north of uh, the city of Las Vegas, up by uh, Mercury Air Force Base, where I used to work. And uh, they'll put you the skills. To, they'll do good use. They'll teach you how to do heating, ventilation, air conditioning, or they'll teach you how to work on cars. They have a huge uh, a car shop, a transmission shop up there. So when you come out of jail in Las, when the city of Las Vegas puts you in, at least you'll have skills. At least you'll have a trade under your belt. So that's how they dealt with the homeless. They actually take a homeless guy who came from Oklahoma to the city of Las Vegas, a bum for nickels and quarters, They'll put you in jail for a year. They'll teach you a trade. And when you come out, they'll hire you one of the casinos to, to do work. So then you're not homeless no more. So, all right. I mean, the city of Las Vegas, I mean, it's great entrepreneurs, people who figure it out, who say, hey, you know what? How do we get rid of the homeless people and not look like rotten, dirty bastards anymore by throwing them on a train, throwing them on a bus and sending them back home? How do we get rid of the homeless? Oh, we're going to put them in jail. Oh, that's horrible. No. Not if we make the jail really nice and we feed them good and house them good and clothe them good. Now we give them a skill and we give them a job training. So then when we put them back on the street, they don't want to go to the street. They like, you know, sleeping in a nice, comfortable bed. They like taking a shower every day. They like eating good food. They like being able to get up in the morning and go to work and get paid. We teach them how to do that here in jail. That's how jail should be run. Not like little prison camps. So the city of Las Vegas did it right. So like I said, it, you know... This is a great opportunity for me to show people, man, you know, like if, if Frank did do something, they can't believe it. I want to forgive and forget. It's, it's unbelievable. It's like people are bashing me on my show. First, people ba- Angela's show bashing me. The, top, uh, the people out here bashing me. It's like, look, my kid doesn't have any broken bones. My kid, he didn't draw any blood. There's nothing here. There's no damages. I've got to let the guy go. What? Because that's the belief in the culture that I was reared under. That's how I was, believed in the American dream. Right. You know, it's off with your head just because the king says so, because the king doesn't like you. It actually has to be damages. And look, is there any damages to my daughter? No. Then you've got to let him go. But uh, he did this. Dude, bottom line is that damages. That's everything I teach people on my shows all the time. So wouldn't I be a hypocrite to say, well... Call, even though there's not physical damages, there, there's emotional damages to her. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Emotional damages to her. Uh huh. And what do you think it was like for her now to be sleeping on uh, a street? She says, uh, I was going to put that. Hurry the email that she sent me. Like, this place sucks. This house sucks. The school sucks. This is not my home. I want to go back home. I want to go back to the farm. I want to go back to my animals. I want to go back to my friends. I want to go back to my school. This place sucks. I can't wait to go home. Is there some, she actually said to me, is there an email address that I can get in contact with the judge to court to tell her I want to get my ass home? So she wants to tell the court judge, get my ass back home. So I'm going to go find who this Linda lady is and say, hey, is there a way that I could uh, send, find an email to this Linda lady so that my kid could write her an email? I'm starting sending emails to the judge. And then this judge who said, oh, well, it would be, uh, it'd be punishing the victim from taking her away from her home. Well, the judge turned around and did it anyway. Two days later, she did it anyway. She told me, I said, wait a second, when they were, they were arraigning Frank, when they were trying to give him bail a bond, they said, no bail, no bond, you know, because she still poses a, a threat to the girl if he's allowed to go back home. And she's there. I said, hey, look, I, you know, I could take the daughter out of there anytime I wish. I said, I've never lost Gussie's kid. I said, I'll take it to another family member. I've got plenty of females, you know, all over the country. that would be more glad to take my kids and me in. And they said, no. The judge said, no. She said, this will be uh, victimizing, punishing the victim by um, removing her from her home. And two days later, the judge did it anyway. Because I, you know, looking at back and forth, hindsight, it's like, look, it doesn't matter whether or not you release Frank, because I already took my kids and already took them out of the state and already placed them in another home. And the judge would have said, what? I said, yeah, because you told me uh, Grandpa uh, abused her. Grandpa is sitting in jail on Saturday. Well, today is Monday. Uh, you better believe when I found out on Sunday, on Saturday, I found out on Saturday, Sunday, I packed the kids up and they're gone until we figure this out. And I love to hear the church say, well, you can't do this. But I did. I'm their damn daddy. But as far as I was concerned, they didn't do, Frank didn't do anything. Obviously, if they thought Frank really did do something, why did they let Frank come home after he said that he did all these horrible things? So the cops said, look, just say that you did it all and we'll let you go home. And we'll work with you. But if you say you didn't do it, we're going to lock you up for at least five months. No bail, no bond. 
So Frank said, okay, fine. Whatever whatever you want me to say, I'll just say whatever you want to say. Uh, you promise me you'll let me go home. Yes, we promise you. As soon as you say everything we want to hear you say, we'll let you go home. And they let him go home. Yeah, they let him go home for about uh, an hour. And then they came and arrested him. But they let him go home. They did tell him the truth. Because it's that slick bullshit legal jargon. Did we say you could go home? If you tell us the truth? Yes. Yeah, they let him go right back home to my kid. Yeah. Well, technically, they kept their word. But they only kept half their word. The other half of their word is like, well, we won't charge you with a crime. We won't put you in jail. You know, we won't, uh, we'll work with you. We'll give you a counseling, and uh, you can go to work on Monday. That's what he was promised. So they lived, only lived up to half the agreement. So that's where I'm going after Mike the cop for breach of the agreement. He had an agreement with Frank, and he only lived up to half the agreement. So that's the lawsuit against Mike the cop. And Mike the cop said that this is what was going to happen. And obviously it's not what's happening. So Mike, you know, committed fraud. And he knew he was committing fraud. He knew he wasn't going to live up to what he said. Yet he got Frank to enter into an agreement with him. And Mike the cop says, well, I'm allowed to lie. And it's like, look, you made an agreement with a man, and that man thought he was talking to another man. He thought he was talking to a man to a man. He thought you were being a man, and he thought you were being honest, telling him really what was going to happen. You were lying to him, and you knew you were lying, and you tricked him. So we're going to hold you liable for tricking another man, for lying to another man. And he's like, no, I was acting as a cop at that time. It's like, you got every opportunity, Mike, to tell it to the jury. You got every opportunity in the world now to tell the jury that you were lying to Frank. And you tell the jury that you're allowed to lie. And you'll let the jury determine whether or not a man dressed in the uniform of a cop could lie to another man. And you will let the jury decide. And the jury says, no, Mike, you didn't do anything wrong. You're a cop and you're allowed to lie your ass off. Fine. Then that's the land we live in. We live in a land where it's settled once and for all that the cop can just lie through his freaking teeth. He can say any damn thing he wants and he can't be held liable. And we can't see compensation from a cop that lies. So we'll let the jury determine it. That's what we're suing Mike in a lawsuit against Mike. So when people say to me, though, Mike even wrote that. Mike said, uh, Mike had an attorney write, say, I don't, and Mike's like, I don't know what I'm being charged with. I don't know what the trespass is. And it's like, and all we had to say was, yes, you do, Mike. You know what it is. If you don't know what it is, well, when we get to court, we'll explain it to you. And that's it. I don't have to explain it any further than when we get to court, Mike. You know what you did? I know what you did. And when I say to the jury what you did, you can defend yourself from that point. I don't have to tell you now what you did. You know and I know what you did. Because when, when we say what you did in front of the jury, you say, that's ridiculous. I didn't do that. Well, you're damn right I did it. You're damn right I told Frank that. Okay, then why did you tell Frank that? Did you let Frank go home? Yes. Did you give him the keys to his car? And did he get back in his car? And did he drive home? On his own. What did you guys drive him home? No, he drove home on his own. So, uh, did Frank was led to believe that you would let him go home and you just get therapy? Because when you let Frank go home, did he grab his three fifty seven and start shooting at you guys? No. Did he grab his three fifty seven and shoot himself? No. Did he come home and grab his three fifty seven and shoot the kid? No. Frank's got a gun, right? Yeah, he's got three fifty seven. Yeah. Well, why did you let the guy go home? Why, why, why did the guy have a gun? If he was so afraid of him, if he was such a horrible monster. Why? Why did you allow that to happen? Well, Frank must have been led to believe that you were going to keep your word. That if he just said, fine, I'm going to cooperate, I'm going to go home, I'm going to get the computers, I'm going to get the video cameras, I'm going to get the cell phones, I'm going to give you everything we got. And you guys can investigate me as much as you want. You're going to let me go home? Yes. And you're going to investigate some more? Yes. And you're not going to lock me up today? No. What do you want me to say? Well, we just want you to say that you did all these things. And then you'll let me go home. Yeah, okay, fine. Then I did all those things. Now let me go home. Okay, here you go, Frank. Here's the keys. Here's your gun. Here's your car. Have a nice day. Go get the computers and uh, we'll come and get them. Or you bring them down here, whatever the hell the agreement was. So when they, gave, they came here, he was putting everything in his car. He was loading up the car with the cameras, the computers, everything. My kid was there. He didn't go after my kids and say, look what you did, you little devil. Look what you did, you little monster. Look what you did. My whole Saturday shot. No, he didn't come after my kid. He didn't say to me, Carl, your kid is fucking my world. 
he said to me, Cole, what should I do? What do you mean, what should you do? I said, just say your hearing's not so good and tell Mike before you agree to do anything Mike tells you to do. Tell Mike to put it in writing because your hearing's not so good. So that way, if he goes back on his work, at least we got something to flow in his face in court. I say, did you write this? Well, yeah, I wrote it. I was like, okay, yeah, no. now that he wrote it, let's take it before the jury. And ask the jury, shouldn't this man have to hold up to what he wrote? That Frank's allowed to go home. 